Mike, Penn State football. We're going to play a little game, uh, name association here. Mm-hmm. We're going to start off with throw out a name, a couple quick words, thoughts come to your head. Christian Hackenberg. Unbelievably clutch, unbelievably talented. Uh, I was impressed with his physical and mental toughness on Saturday night. Has there been anybody at Penn State, quarterback-wise, as good as this guy? Well, I, I think Kerry Collins, certainly in 1994, okay. certainly right. when I'll he was a first-team All-American and got some high, I think he finished fourth in the Heisman and was incredible. Now, he had a lot of weapons around him and a much, 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 much better offensive line. I five, uh, five, I wanted five, I, wanted to, I went with five. Than than uh, than Hackenberg is dealing with now. Okay, name association: Penn State defense. Um, athletic, active, aggressive. I, I think they're thriving under the the uh, the uh, scheme of this new coordinator, Bob Shoup. And uh, man, they've been money in the bank so far. Uh, I'm gonna put two words together: comeback slash game winning drives. <laughs> well, they're not. They're a relatively young team. But they don't compete like a young team. They compete like a mature team. It seems like I, I, I'm very leery about going nuts with these intangibles because sometimes it's kind of like you, after the fact, you kind of imbue people with these intangibles. But right. it does seem like they have a lot of poise. They don't point fingers. They don't crumble. They have a lot of confidence, a lot of belief in each other, and, and it's shown up so far. Gino Lewis, after the game, a comment, maybe it was your article or somebody else's I read, said, we got in that huddle for that last drive. We said, all right, let's go do it. Yep. And it just, that just seems to be the mentality. And you know they're younger guys. Yep. Rutgers' atmosphere. Oh, it was tremendous. It was uh, really noisy. It was a lot of emotion. Rutgers, I, you know, I think harbors some resentment of Penn State for years of a kind of being in the shadow of the bigger, more prominent program. There were some things said by some players that fueled the fire on both sides, and there there was a lot of emotion there on Saturday night. It was it was an interesting and and fun place to be. I think I heard that Rutgers had a clock in their locker room. They've had all offseason counting down to this game. Yep, yep. That's the thing. They had a lead. They were in some ways dominating. Other ways, Penn State was just sort of sticking around there. Yep. At the very end, pull out. It had to be pretty de- deflating for Rutgers. Was yeah, sort of- it did. And and, and now they got to play the rest of the season after putting so much into that and not getting it done. You're, you're right. It, it's, it's, a, it's a coaching job for Kyle Flood, I think, and his staff from a motivational standpoint. Off uh, – you mentioned the press conference with Franklin. He mentioned the offensive line a little bit. What did he say? Well, he talked about – he thinks the problem is communication and coordination. And, and he talked He talked about how they have to make line calls. Like one guy has to make a line call, and that affects the other the other four guys. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's the tight end is involved in this too, the other five guys. And, and, and sometimes guys are even afraid to make calls. Mm-hmm. They don't have enough confidence yet. And, and he was saying, don't be afraid to make a mistake. Go ahead and make the call. So there's a little bit of – he expanded a little bit on what he exactly he's talking about when he talks about this communication issue. I have that in my notes. Offensive line, schedule, help. What am I talking about there? <laughs> well, uh, UMass this week, which should be cannon fodder. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the week after that, Northwestern, which has really struggled so far and has key injuries at key spots. And then a bye week okay. before you go to Michigan. So so uh, they the offensive line in particular, the team in general, but the offensive line in particular, needs a lot of work. And maybe over the next couple of weeks, they have time to get some of that mm-hmm. work. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you're going to see, uh, you know, you know, this game on Saturday with UMass will be seen almost entirely from through the prism of has the offensive line made any progress? They have a chance to work on it. I think this is when you better be establishing the run. These guys better yep. be you know, the big. The big uglies better be creating yep. some holes. I want to see some running. Um, the schedule is, is favorable. It's really it's heavy at the back end. You've mentioned that to me, but I do think that's an experienced Central Florida coach who's have experienced players. Yeah. Akron had an experienced staff, and I think it's going to do very well in the MAC. And Rutgers in that hostile environment, these are all helping. I, I saw Pitt played inter, Florida International and was yep. losing for a while. Yep. Uh, Miami of Ohio went to Michigan, and, and Michigan was close with them into the third quarter. Having gotten through this stretch, uh-huh. these first three, I, I agree with you, Starkey. Having gotten through this stretch with not only decent opponents, but tr- the travel problems and the logistics, and, and now you're going to be – you're going to be at home now for three weeks in a row, right. uh, and, and maybe a little bit of normalcy sets in, uh, and, and maybe you can kind of look at really focus on player development. Anything with UMass we need to know? Uh, UMass is 0-3, or 1-11 last year, 0-3 uh, this year. 
Uh, one of the losses was to was to uh, Boston College, which looks okay now mm-hmm. after what Boston College did on Saturday. Uh, the other two were very close. They really should have won last week against Vanderbilt, mm-hmm. Colorado, and Vanderbilt. So they they kind of play up in the in their in their non conference. Mm-hmm. But again, this is a game that Penn State should win comfortably and easily.